Hi, it's Philippa Sheridan here. We're going to take a brief look at the key differences between level one and level two CFA exams. Now, first off, I'm going to assume that level one, you either sat from 2021 onwards or you are sitting studying for it at the moment. If you sat level one before 2021 and you're now coming back to level two, uh, then you might remember level one length of exams, number of questions, etc., to be slightly different. Yes, your memory is not failing you. Uh, the information I've got on screen here is based on 2021 onwards when the computer based exams came into play. So the length of the exam, very, very similar. Um, a morning and an afternoon session for both level one and level two, two and a quarter hours versus two hours, 12 minutes. So you're not going to notice the difference between the length of those exams. Exam sittings, there are four sittings for level one. For level two, there's not a February sitting, that's when level three sits. Uh, so instead, it's just three sittings, May, August and November each year. Big difference on this slide is the number of questions. So it's still completely multiple choice as level one was. That will change when you get to level three. There are 180 questions for level one. So that's 90 in the morning, 90 in the afternoon. For level two, it's only 88. So 44 questions in the morning and 44 in the afternoon. Now, this brings us on to probably the biggest difference between level one and level two. At level one, each question was completely standalone. You were provided with a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs, some numbers for one particular question. You answered that question, you moved on to the next screen and that previous question is behind you, completely forgotten about. Each topic was also fully tested in either the morning or the afternoon. So, for example, FSA, financial statement analysis, once you got to lunchtime, you knew that you had answered all questions on FSA. Now, at level two, the, those 88 questions are broken down into 22 vignettes. Now, that's a word that is an English language word, but I often find candidates haven't come across it. I'm not sure I'd come across it until I sat my level two exam. And what this means is that you'll be provided with the text for the scenario. It will be much longer than you would have had at level one. And from that text, there will be four questions. Now, each of those four questions is still standalone. So if you get the first of those four questions wrong, it doesn't mean that you're automatically going to get the others wrong. So you can still get questions two, three and four correct, even if question one is incorrect. But what it does mean is that one of the skills you'll be learning in level two is how to look at all of the text, all of the information they've given you in this particular vignette and work out which pieces, which paragraphs or which numbers are relevant for each question in turn. Now, to be clear, each vignette will only test one topic. It will tell you what the topic is at the top. So, for example, quantitative methods or economics and those topics can appear in both the morning and or the afternoon. So a good example of this would be derivatives. At level two, derivatives is five to 10% of the exam. Well, there's 88 questions in total, so 10% of that would be 8.8 .8 questions. Well, you can't have a partial question in the exam. So what this really means is derivatives is likely to be either four questions in your level two exam, i.e. one vignette, or eight questions you're almost 10%. So derivatives, you are likely to see either one vignette or two vignettes, and that will be either about 5% or about 10%. These could be tested in either the morning or the afternoon or both. So when you get to lunchtime in your level two exam, if you've already answered two vignettes, i.e. eight questions on derivatives, you can be pretty confident there's no further derivatives to come in the afternoon. If you've only answered one vignette, However, in the afternoon, you may find there's another vignette making up two in total, about 10%, or you might find that one in the morning was it. And your derivatives are only making up about 5% of your level two exam. Now, this is something you'll get a lot more familiar with as you go through and start practicing questions. As I said, it's probably the biggest difference and it's the key piece of exam technique that you want to get to grips with as you go through your studies. Very briefly, to finish us off then, the content. Now, the syllabus weightings are actually very, very similar between levels one and levels two. Level one focuses on the basics of investment valuation. It's a lot uh, more theoretical than the later exams. Not so much putting things into practice, 
whereas level two starts to put the knowledge into practice. Now those vignettes might be the first question is asking you to do a calculation and then the second question is asking you to comment or decide which director's comment was the least accurate. So within the scenario, there might be three different directors who've given an opinion on something and they want you to decide which is the least accurate, for example. As I said, similar, weight, similar weightings for the syllabus breakdown. There's a slightly higher focus on portfolio management at level two. So at level one, this was five to eight percent. At level two, this doubles pretty much 10 to 15 percent. Now of course for that to double the other areas are going to have to move around and some of them decrease a little bit but mostly just by one or two percent so they are not big changes in the syllabus weightings. The increase in portfolio management again gets you ready for level three where portfolio management makes up a much larger portion of the syllabus. So that's a brief overview of the key differences between level one and level two. Don't be scared by the idea of the vignettes. It's quite nice sometimes to actually kind of get into a bit of a flow with one scenario rather than at level one, your brain having to jump from economics to FSA to quants, etc. And um, with no kind of rhyme or reason to it. Best of luck.